Hello guys and uh, welcome back to my channel. Today I want to start and repair an ESC that I received from somebody a long time ago. I just forgot about it. Basically it's a Betaflight ESC but made by somebody else. I don't know um, who makes it. Airbot I guess. I have another one working right here. So this is the one. Here, uh, one LED has to be in place, but uh, appears somebody took it out. If we look at the Betaflight one, you can see they installed here an LED. And also they use some sort of epoxy here to hold it in place. But on this one, no epoxy was used. So in a crash, a prop strike or something like that, the LED ripped off from the PCB, taking with it also the pads, one pad here, this one, and also this one. These two little ICs here control the LED. As you can see, we have lines going from uh, this one to here. To here we have the pad going from that one and also the one from here. But uh, we are not interested in these lines because the LED doesn't affect how the ESC works. But instead we are going to focus about these two missing uh, caps from here. These two caps missing from here are from the switching voltage regulator which sits here goes through this inductor, through this diode and after that we have the caps to ground which is this one and why we are interested in these two caps is because we don't have caps here the voltage regulator is in an unstable mode connecting it to my power supply and I can see 80 milliampers which is a bit excessive on an ESC that is uh, sitting and not working. So what we need to do is just uh, clean the pads a bit. Taking some uh, fresh solder and use it to clean these pads. As you can see the ones on the left melt quite easy but the ones on the right are a bit harder to melt and that's because they are ground so I will need to increase my temperature of the iron just to have enough force to melt it even now it's a little bit harder to melt even though I set it up on uh, 380 Celsius, as you can see, it's pretty hard to melt compared to these two. And to be able to melt it and clean it, I will change my tip with a chisel type, bigger, bigger tip. This one, it is a little bigger, but it should melt as you can see pretty good taking my solder wick and clean the pads as best as I can I guess it's okay Taking some Q-tip with alcohol and rubbing to clean it a bit just to have a better view of the things here and I already noticed something this diode is not quite soldered down and it's a little bit twisted it should work, but we have to touch up there with some uh, fresh solder. Changing the tip again. 
this tip is a little bit uh, thinner and hopefully I can uh, touch up that one switching the orientation of the board to be easier to touch up that diode like this and we can also touch up the other side of the diode just to be sure everything is okay okay now I have a donor PCB here from where I took some other parts too and we are interested in those two taking the hot air gun and heating up most definitely the LED will melt but I don't care about it and I have my two caps switching back here we will clean the caps later if you can remember I've said that two of the pads are ground and very hard to heat up so I will work on these two here and placing solder there and here taking the cap and heat up this one part holding down a bit that's okay and we have one more hopefully not disturbing the other one so we managed to solder this too. Now turning the board on the other side and because this tip is too thin on the end I will switch back to the previous one to help me out a bit I will place some flux and now preparing to solder the other side Hopefully we are lucky. We don't need to break that connection, but if we want to, we can use the solder wick just to, to break the connection a bit. Okay. Now let's clean the other side of the cap just a tiny bit and this is just to make it look better one more thing to do I want to cut this trace here now taking the q-tip and cleaning here thoroughly hopefully cleaning this caps too and they will look shiny again and after the q-tip I will spray some alcohol and use a toothbrush to clean uh, even more the q-tip is very nice because it drags the dirt and mess on the cotton so now more alcohol and we fixed our two little missing caps this diode was uh, not properly soldered down I cut out this uh, little piece that was uh, flimsy we don't need those pads so uh, we are safe we took these two caps from the donor and soldered them here I decided to use the soldering iron but you could have done it um, with hot air 
but uh, I wanted to limit the hot air going here. Now for the moment of truth, let's see if the ESC starts up okay and not drawing that much current. Okay, so I connected a motor here and let's power it up and see if it draws too much current or not. The motor was uh, beeping the right way, but I still see around 80 milliampers of current draw. I can feel here some heat. Let's take them both out. Most definitely only one is dead, but um, I will take them both out because I don't need them. Hot air is ready. Let's heat up these uh, little two puppies. Hopefully we can take them out fast. Yep, the positive lead just got disconnected. This one is out and this one is out too. Okay, so I'm not pretty happy because uh, I still have too much current draw. The 3.3 volt regulator is getting pretty toasty. If I would have to guess, I would say that the MCU is dead for some reason related to the breakage here but I'm not certain that this one is sometimes the MCUs do get broken halfway and this could be one of those uh, moments when uh, the MCU gets half dead or we could have a bad um, IC that measures the current draw I'm not yet certain if that's the case but I'm most definitely sure that this one measures the current draw we could try and uh, take this out and see if the amperage goes lower and if not I will have to take this um, MCU from a donor and place it here and see what we've got so first I'm gonna just take this uh, current sensing IC out Let's power it up. I can hear the beeps, but same current draw. A good working uh, ESC draws around 30 milliampers when it's not working. Just sitting. Almost uh, 50 milliampers more is a bad sign. And what I feared the most, I'm afraid it's real. I will just place the. Uh, this I see back because it's not the culprit here And taking out the MCU. Luckily I have some uh, donor boards. Our diode went closer to the edge. Now just clean the pads. The cleaning with a Q-tip. Now going to the donor, which is this one. 
taking the MCU out of here. When you work with uh, BL Heli 32, you have to be careful because uh, the MCUs have a license, the software and the MCUs have a license, so you cannot uh, just take one fresh MCU and place it uh, somewhere because you would not be able to flash it again. Let's take a look at the back of the MCU. changing the tip and now let's just place solder on the pads These are ground, so this is why they are so hard to melt. So now we have enough solder on the pads, putting some flux on, placing uh, the MCU. We can uh, see here the dot that represents pin number one and we just place it here and hopefully we will see it jump in place alone when everything heats up Everything seems okay, except that we have here a bulge that we will try to fix it here. You guessed it, Q-tip to clean up the things here. Hopefully everything is soldered down. It's not quite centered, but I guess it looks okay. And now let's power it up and see if we have the normal current draw for this ESC. Oh my god. <laughs> this MCU had the PL Heli with uh, some song at the beginning and we see exactly 30 milliamps of current draw. So that's a good sign. The MCU was the culprit and I suspect was something related to this uh, breakage happening here so yeah we fixed it <laughs> uh, all uh, that's left to do is just um, to flash it with the correct version of BL Heli and obviously the newest one but um, this one is fixed thank you very much guys for watching and till the next time bye